Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Um, it's um, especially to be among these esteemed colleagues. The information that we heard yesterday is um, so foundational to the work that, um, that my company has done to try and introduce rehabilitation to China. Okay. So I'm going to talk about um, how might we use educational technology to solve some of the problems or address some of the issues that you folks mentioned so eloquently yesterday. Um, we are a, a company that is primarily a rehabilitation company in the United States. And we were approached by the government of China to bring rehabilitation services to Chinese hospitals and clinics and health systems. And so in 2014, um, it, and, and I'm not going to go into this slide because this has clearly been addressed uh, extensively yesterday, but Genesis Rehab Services um, is coming to China to open clinics and rehab units in hospitals and senior centers and in the community, community-based centers around China. We have 15 sites opened already in Beijing, Shanghai, Xinwandao, uh, Guangzhou, Hangzhou, and I'm probably forgetting some other places. But, um, so, but in order to bring rehab services to China, we didn't want to import all of our own therapists. We wanted to utilize and leverage the talent that's in China. And we recognized that there was a gap in treatment processes and in um, rehabilitation capability. So we needed to upskill our rehab therapists in China. And so we started the GRS Academy. And I am the Senior Director of Curriculum Development for the Academy. So I'm going to talk a bit more, not so much about the strategic strategies of, um, of addressing the rehab challenges, but rather how do we build educational resources, how do we build curriculum that will support the upskilling of very well-trained and very brilliant Chinese people who have not been exposed to some of the capabilities and theories and practices in U.S. healthcare. One of the challenges that we recognized is that the Chinese therapists have a, a generic rehabilitation degree, whereas in the United States we're specifically occupational uh, speech therapy and physical therapists. Uh, those are uh, separate and unique degrees. And so we, our first set of curriculum involved upskilling the rehab therapists in, um, in those three areas. The other thing we recognized is that we have an opportunity to support the health and wellness of the public. And so not only training therapists in those specific rehab capabilities, but also to introduce the concept of a health coach to upskill all health professionals and even the general public in better, healthier lifestyle, in nutrition, in um, adopting exercise, smoking cessation, and also to upskill Chinese professionals in the art of communication and coaching for their patients to adopt some of those lifestyles. But when you look at this, the realm of healthcare education, we all can recognize that not everything can be taught online. So how do we grab onto that challenge of teaching huge numbers of people across very diverse populations and very widespread geography and be able to provide them the knowledge and the skills and the attitudes and abilities to be able to implement what we're teaching. So we adopted an online learning platform that helps us to address a variety of different challenges that we saw. So certainly, it helps us with our geographic reach. It's scalable. We can offer training in a very small site, or we can offer training across a large area. It gives people access anytime, um, depending on what time zone you're on, uh, depending on what your work schedule might be or your lifestyle. You can access it 24-7. 
It also addresses diverse learning styles. Some of us are auditory learners, others are visual learners, others experiential. And through using technology and a learning management system and online learning, you're able to provide learning experiences that make it easier for people to learn in all of those situations. We can use learning technology and uh, the internet to provide both asynchronous uh, meaning self-paced or synchronous learning opportunities where there is an instructor. So we can have an instructor online and, and deliver a virtual classroom. We can deliver a virtual lab. We can have a supervisor online observe a learner demonstrating competency in a particular task, demonstrating a certain activity. They can do range of motion, for instance, on a family member and demonstrate their ability to do that. It can be very interactive and engaging. We, using technology, our learners can interact with each other through discussion boards. They can interact with the instructor or the professor. They can um, to do, be safe and do it when nobody's looking and practice and try it out and take a test and uh, come back to it later, uh, have their questions answered, etc. We can certainly use the technology to measure the quality of their performance, to measure their understanding, their capability. We can also uh, um, make it very cost effective. We don't have the travel costs. We don't have to rent a beautiful room like this to offer a training, but we can reach people very in a very cost effective way. So that's why we determined that online learning was probably a really good way to solve some of our challenges here. We are a, a leader in the U.S. Um, in rehabilitation. We are in 43 states in the District of Columbia. We have over 25,000 employees. We're, our programs are based, the content that we're building at the Academy is based on our experience in the U.S. We have all kinds of case studies that we can incorporate into our programs to make it very real and very evidence-based. And we can also focus on keeping uh, preparing learners to be job ready. So we can teach not only the knowledge and the content, the, but we can also teach them the skills that way. And it's, there's less employee downtime, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And it also streamlines the administration and the reporting of our programs because the, the system monitors how much time our learners are online, how much of the program they're actually completing or interacting with, uh, what their performance is, how well they're doing on different knowledge checks and such. So it really is a, a, a very, very viable way to provide education. But at the same time, as I mentioned before, not all education, uh, certainly not all healthcare education, is appropriate to be taught online. And I use the example, you can't teach a person how to swim from a computer. They have to get in the water, they have to practice, they have to fail, they have to struggle. But there are ways that you can also, using simulation and using uh, case studies, you can still offer some of that experiential um, programming in, and to enable our learners to learn. And then you augment it with other strategies where you are face-to-face -face or where you work with a mentor and such. So these are some of the, the questions that we answer, some of the things that we consider as we're building uh, curriculum. Um, how will our learners demonstrate their skills? And that's one of the things that we adopted very early is that we, we deliver competency-based education. So it's very learner-centric. When I develop curriculum, I start with what is it that we want our learners to know? And more important, what is it we want our learners to be able to do? And based on that, we identify the competencies for that program. And then we look at how will we judge or assess or determine that in fact they did meet those competencies. So is it through return demonstration? Is it through a, a didactic uh, discussion, an oral exam? Is it through a competency assessment? Um, and so from there, once we know what the competency is and how we want to measure it, then we develop the curriculum from there. And that's how we determine job readiness. And we're also very interested in how our learners react, as well as how our uh, faculty and our um, subject matter experts 
respond to the content. So we utilize a blended strategy. We have a few courses that are entirely asynchronous, entirely online, but much of our program is blended so that we can do our lectures, we can do the video demonstrations, we can have quizzes, case studies, simulations, and discussions online. We can also then um, have, so those are totally self-paced and you can do that 24-7, 365. But then we can also do some synchronous online things where the instructor, the professor is online with the learners at the same time. And in those set situations, we can do content review sessions. We can do discussions. We can help our learners prepare for exams. We can uh, do live demonstrations and have oral discussions and oral exams with our learners. And then we can also have synchronous on-ground sessions. So by, and we're gradually ramping up more, but by having on-ground proctors in strategic locations. We can have a trained therapist, a trained proctor, observe the demonstration of a, a competency to truly assess that the, that the learner is ready, is job ready and, um, and ready to, to work with our patients in our clinics. Um, we can also offer supervised remediation if the learner is struggling and, um, and having difficulty. And, um, we can certainly demonstrate the nuances of it. The other thing that I heard a lot of people talk about yesterday was the importance of uh, clinical reasoning and uh, critical thinking. And that's something we've started to introduce through our exam preparation. We're starting to use more and more case studies in our programs so that we follow a patient through the course and the, the patients are terribly sick. They have all kinds of things happen to them in the course of a program. <laughs> but, um, and then the, the learners are asked to problem solve. And we use our online um, resources for, to offer multiple choice questions that are case-based. So your patient exhibits these kind of um, uh, symptoms, having this kind of reaction to it. So what's the best answer, A, B, C, D, or E? And the learner can then online select their, their choice of what treatment they might produce or what uh, issue they might want to address to remediate. And then we have discussions around why that might be the best answer and why some of the others might not be the best answer in this particular situation. Or we can also say, what other questions do we need to ask? What don't we know enough about this patient to make a good decision for a clinical direction? So we found that to be a very successful way of engaging our learners and, um, and getting them to respond and interact with our instructors in a, a very productive way. So this is an example of some of our screenshots and I will be at the lunch demonstration today with some additional screenshots and some books and, and pictures of, of uh, our courses that we offer. And uh, it just gives you a little bit of an idea of um, you know some of the things, all of these, there's video, there's um, uh, we use avatars to demonstrate different techniques and capabilities. And, um, and one of the most important programs that we started recently was a health coach program. And um, we had over 500 learners that participated in this program. And we wanted to know how they felt about it. And here are some examples of some learner testimonials. Um, we had physicians that took our course. We had um, uh, other health professionals, and we had just um, private citizens. One gentleman was an IT leader, and I'm going to advance it uh, for our Chinese colleagues so you can also read some of their testimonials. The physicians talked about how it improved their ability to communicate with their patients, how it, it helped their patients buy into why they were, uh, why they needed to see the doctor, and the. the responsibility that they had for getting through this disease or this illness, this condition, what responsibility they had to prevent it from happening again. So we had very positive responses and some very valuable feedback as well to help us to continue to improve our program. And the one other thing that we heard yesterday was the importance again of the competency base. So we did partner with the National Board of Medical Examiners to create an uh, an examination that my esteemed colleague, Ms. Anderson, is going to speak to you next about that exam. 
but um, we were delighted with, uh, with the participation. We, as, again, we had over 500 learners that participated in our uh, online pilot. And at the end of that program, um, almost all 500 of them sat for the exam. And uh, are you going to tell them about the results? OK, then I'm going to keep you in suspense. I'm not going to tell you the results of the exam. But uh, needless to say, we were delighted with the outcome. We were delighted with the response from our students and very excited about how this program can support the, the, um, the growth of public health, the growth of community health, and the, the improvement around some of the, the competences that you all spoke about yesterday about the clinical care of the patient and the ability for physicians to communicate effectively with their patients and for the quality of care. So I thank you most kindly for your attention today.